The Siege of Ostend was a three-year siege of the city of Ostend during the Eighty Years' War and the Anglo-Spanish War. A Spanish force under Archduke Albrecht besieged the fortress being held initially by a Dutch force which was reinforced by English troops under Francis Villa who became the town's governor. It is said, the Spanish assailed the unassailable, the Dutch defended the indefensible, the commitment of both sides in the dispute over the only place in the Dutch province of Flanders, made the campaign continue for more than any other during the war, thus causing one of the longest and bloodiest sieges in world history. More than 100,000 people were killed, wounded or succumbed to disease during the siege. Ostend was resupplied via the sea and as a result held out for three years. A garrison did a tour of duty before being replaced by fresh troops, normally 3,000 at a time keeping casualties and disease to a minimum. The siege consisted of a number of assaults by the Spanish, including a massive failed assault by 10,000 Spanish infantry in January 1602 when governed by Villa. After suffering heavy losses the Spanish had replaced the Archduke with Ambrosio Spinola and the siege settled down to one of more attrition with the strong points gradually being taken one at a time. Ostend was eventually captured by the Spanish on 20 September 1604 but the city was completely destroyed and the overall strategy had changed since the siege had started. The Spanish objectives to control Ostend with a high strategic value for its geographical location overlooking the North Sea were frustrated by the Dutch and English conquest of Sluice a few weeks before the surrender of Ostend. In addition, the economic cost of such a long campaign and the enormous amount of casualties sustained turned the result into a Spanish Pyrrhic victory and, effectively the siege contributed largely to Spanish bankruptcy three years later which was followed by the Twelve Years' Truce. Background in 1568, during the reign of Philip II of Spain, the Netherlands, until then under the rule of the Spanish Empire, took up arms against the Spanish crown. The first phase of the war began with two unsuccessful invasions of the provinces by mercenary armies under Prince William I of Orange in foreign-based raids by the Cusan or Sea Beggars. By the end of 1573 the beggars had captured the bulk of the provinces of Holland and Zealand as well as converted the populace to Calvinism, and secured against Spanish attack. The other provinces joined in the revolt in 1576, and a general union was formed. In 1579 the union was fatally weakened by the defection of the Roman Catholic Walloon provinces. By 1588 the Spanish, under Alexander Farnese, Duke of Parma had reconquered the southern Low Countries leaving only Ostend as a major rebel enclave along the coast and stood poised for a death blow against the nascent Dutch Republic in the north. Spain's concurrent enterprises against England and France at this time, however, allowed the Republic to begin a highly successful counter-offensive under Maurice of Orange which lasted from 1590 to 1600 known as the Ten Glory Years. In 1599 the Archduke Albert of Austria and Isabel Clara Eugenia, brother and sister of Philip III ruled as joint sovereigns of the Netherlands through the will of the dying Philip II. By 1600 Maurice of Nassau was Stadtholder and Johan van Oldenbarnevelt was Grand Pensionary of the States General of the Netherlands. In 1601 Spain now under King Philip III with his favourite the Duke of Lerma despite maintaining its hegemony in the world, was economically weakened with war and bankruptcy. Starting with the bankruptcy of the Royal Treasury in 1575, operations against the Ottomans in the Mediterranean, 30 years of war in Flanders against the rebel forces of the United Provinces and a war with England which had waged from 1585. Spain had also only just finished a costly and unsuccessful war with France. The wars were a great burden for the Spanish Empire and meant that financially Spain depended entirely on the treasure fleet brought from the colonies. Nevertheless, Philip pursued a highly aggressive set of policies, aiming to deliver a great victory against both Holland and England. 
The situation of the United Provinces was similar. More than 30 years of war and foreign trade blocked by Spain had caused a financial drain. The Dutch tried to relieve their precarious finances by commercially expanding into the East Indies with the birth of the Dutch East India Company. England were in the same position and were fighting now in Ireland. Like the Dutch they too had just set up to their own East India Company. In 1600 the Dutch and English army under the command of Maurice of Nassau and Francis Villa respectively used Ostend as a base to invade Flanders, in an attempt to conquer the city of Dunkirk after their victory in the Battle of Newport. This never happened however as disputes in the Dutch command meant that taking Spanish-occupied cities in the rest of the Netherlands took over, priority as the opportunity arose. Morris concurred and had his forces evacuated by sea leaving Ostend to be preoccupied by the Spanish. Ostend founded 500 years ago, the city of Ostend in the mid-16th century was a fishing village of about 3,000 inhabitants. Ostend's strategic position in the province of West Flanders, along the North Sea and accessible to Dutch sea power, was fortified by the Dutch and English between 1583 and 1590, and turned into a major military port. In the view of the state of Flanders, Ostend in the hands of the Protestant Dutch and English was a huge thorn in their side. Ostend unlike other places in the Netherlands had never been taken by the Spanish and the garrison had even repelled an attack by Parma in 1583. In 1587, during preparations for the invasion of England by the Spanish Armada, Palmer had rejected the idea of a conquest of Ostend by considering it a reckless enterprise after the capture of Sluice. The garrison had also made frequent incursions into the adjacent country. Ostend was the only possession of the Dutch Republic in Flanders and its capture was of strategic importance for the Spanish. Defences The reason why Palmer was so cautious to attack was not just for its defences, but also its place right near the sea. The old church and town faced the seas, but in 1583 the new town, further inland, was fortified with ramparts, counterscarps, and two broad ditches. The dunes were cut away, and the sea was allowed to fill the ditches and surround the town. A canal called the Goyla had begun to form a new harbour on the east side. It was wide, deep and navigable and served the maritime traffic to the city. To the south a framework of streams and wetlands, often flooded, would have made the area difficult to place heavy siege guns, where the land rose slightly towards the dunes. On either side of the town, the besiegers would be able to approach with their parallels and batteries and as such were vulnerable points. On the west side of Ostend another canal, the Old Haven was more of a defensive moat which was barely navigable, but could not be easily waded except for four hours at low tide. A ditch passed between the old and new towns, which were connected by bridges, and round the new town, parallel to the Goyla on one side, and to the old harbour and Wyplet stream on the other. The Gela itself had ramparts and bulwarks on one side, and a counterscarp with ravelins on the other, while the water level for both canals could be adjusted from the lock located in the city. In the old town, closer to the mouth of the old harbour, a fort called the Sand Hill had been constructed. The old town was protected by strong palisades forming bastions with connecting curtains, and a succession of three small forts, the Schottenberg, the Moses Table, and the Flamenberg all defending a cut from the town ditch into the Goyla at the eastern corner. On the eastern side of the town facing the Goyla, the defences consisted of a range of bulwarks North Bulwark, East Bulwark or Pacal, Spanish Bulwark at the southeast angle, with an outwork called the Spanish Half Moon. To the south and west an extensive outwork, the Polder, which had formerly been a field from which the water had been pumped by means of windmills near the point where the Wyplet stream flowed into the Old Harbour. Flanking the Polder at both points were the South Bulwark and the West Bulwark. This then linked to the Polder, South and West Squares, Ostend's most outer defensive works. 
At the northwest angle, near the mouth of the fordable Old Harbor, the walls consisted of a strong ravelin in the counterscarp called the Porspic, and a bastion in its rear known by the name of the Helmund. This was considered the most important terrier to defend as an attempt on the walls could be made on firm ground. The north area was open to the sea, where Ostend could receive reinforcements and supplies during the high tide. Forces armies during this period of warfare utilized pikes, arquebuses, swords, daggers, rudimentary explosives, early forms of hand grenades as well as artillery. As there were more wounded than deaths in battle, amputations were the common solution for treating wounds. At this time poor sanitation spread infections and fever, causing more deaths than combat. The tertios of the Spanish Empire were regarded at the time as the elite of the military corps, which kept their military hegemony in the 16th century and early part of the 17th and is seen by historians as a major development of early, modern combined arms warfare. The quality of their organization and strict discipline made them efficient, but certain circumstances such as delays in pay sometimes escalated into violent mutinies. The tertios consisted of recruited soldiers of all domains of the Spanish Habsburg Empire, Spaniards, Portuguese, Italians, Germans, Walloons, Swiss, Burgundians loyal to Spain and dissident Catholic Irish, along with mercenaries from other countries. They were led by the Archduke Albrecht who was military commander of the Spanish forces in the Low Countries. The defending forces of Ostend were the Army of the United Provinces, reorganized by Maurice of Nassau who also played a part in the development of early modern warfare. The Dutch had large support from their Protestant ally England whose pikemen and arquebusiers were clad in red cassocks. The English having distinguished themselves highly in battles such as Turnout and Newport where they had faced and beaten the Spanish tertios were considered the veterans and the elite of the army as a whole. They did have a reputation however as being thieves, pillaging friend and foe alike during and after battle. Other Protestant troops from Scotland, France and Germany took their side amongst Morris's army. 